John's father passed when he was only four years old. He grew up in Vermont and by the age of 17 was apprenticed to a blacksmith. Perhaps he would have stayed in that state and you'd have never known his name if not for some pioneers who asked if that man, John Deere, was interested in relocating. And some of those folks went back east and said, John, we need a blacksmith in our little town of Grandy Tour. And that started his pilgrimage out west. Today, Rick Crahan portrays blacksmith John Deere, who arrived here in the latter half of 1836. Upon his arrival, he found a common problem among local farmers. He's listening to people talk about how hard this ground is to plow out here. It's just overrun with prairie grass and it's thick and the, soil, the plows we have from back east were terrible. The side would just stick to them. So Deere began to make some changes to the plow to help solve those problems. Was it the shape of his plow that made the difference? Was it because it was steel versus cast iron that made the difference? Or was it because he polished it on a sandstone grinding wheel that made the difference? And I have to say, yes, yes, and yes. You can still see the foundation of the original blacksmith shop where Deere began fashioning those revolutionary plows. He made just one plow in 1837. The next year, he built two. In 1839, he built 10, and by 1840, he built 40 and listed his occupation on that year's census as a plowmaker. Although he could build plows here, the steel was coming from Sheffield, England. So there's an incredible cost at the arrival of the steel because it gets shipped from England through the Gulf of Mexico to New Orleans, riverboat up the Mississippi River to Moline, then wagon train from Moline to Granny Tour just to get the steel here. Moving his manufacturing to Moline helped reduce the cost of making plows. Eventually, the shop in the village of Grand Teter faded, but was not forgotten. Rick has the title of blacksmith with Deer and Company, the same job the founder held. He spends days around the furnace and anvil, molding, shaping, hammering, and fashioning steel. He answers visitors' questions as he works, sharing the story of a blacksmith who built a business based on plows. I always tell people, John Deere would run over by a tractor, he'd say, what was that? Because he had been gone 32 years by the time the company got into one. It still needs a little tuning. It's a role Rick enjoys, sharing the skills of old while working with a company that prides itself on the latest agricultural equipment. We've come from one man, one anvil, one plow, to 182 years later, this global enterprise, and we're feeding the world, and it all started right here in Grandy Tour, Illinois. It's been nearly 200 years since John Deere fashioned a plow similar to this in his local blacksmith shop. It was a tool that revolutionized the world of his day, and a tool that still brings visitors here to see the worldwide company it grew into. Traveling the countryside in Grand Detour, Illinois, I'm Andrew McCray.